This is a minifigure habitat. It's a really cool way to display your minifigures and also hone your mock building skills. They are made with these 8x8 plates and can connect together with other ones to make a larger display. I became kind of obsessed with making these a couple of weeks ago and decided it would be fun to make a custom medieval castle by building a bunch of different habitats. So today we're going to build six habitats and at the end of the video we'll have a full castle with an armory, wizard study, blacksmith, and a bunch of other rooms so stay tuned for that. For our first habitat we're going to make a castle courtyard for this knight to train in. Now before we start building these we need to understand the rules of a minifigure habitat. Number one, they've got to be built on these 8 by 8 plates. You can of course combine different plates to get up to this size if you don't have any 8x8s. The next rule is that the first half of the build must be 4 bricks tall and stick out by one stud on the left side. This is so that you can connect multiple habitats together later on. And the second half of the habitat must also be 4 bricks high, but this time with a 1 stud overhang on the right side. Again, to help attach it to other habitats that you build. And finally, you can cap it all off with a layer of plates and tiles so that habitats can be built on top of each other. So now that we understand the basic laws of LEGO habitats, we can get started with the castle courtyard. To begin this habitat, I'm going to start by laying down a cobblestone pattern on the ground. I'm using a bunch of different 1x1s in dark and light grey. You can mix in whatever 1x1s you have, but I went with a lot of rounded tiles because I think they really sell that cobblestone look. For the walls, we're obviously going to be going with the standard light and dark bluish grey with some masonry bricks and snot bricks for added texture. I considered throwing in some of those ingot pieces for even more texture in the walls, but I feel like it would have been too much for this small of a build, but who knows. I'm not too concerned with how these outer walls look because the real star, in my opinion, should be the interiors that you put in them. But that doesn't mean I'm going to make them all boring. For some added flavor, I'll hide a shield in the wall over here and cover the rest of the walls in some vines. This little bit of added foliage I think helps sell the idea that this is an outside castle courtyard. And for our final touch on this habitat, we'll add a brick-built training dummy for our knight to practice with. If you're curious about how I made this knight, all I've done is swap a black falcon torso around and given him a pair of flat silver arms. And a custom sand blue cape. This is a blue lion knight's castle, so these black falcon torsos flipped around actually work pretty well for them. And they're also a pretty decent way to beef up your blue lion army. Okay, our first habitat is done. Next up, I think we should build a blacksmith to go next to it. I know, I know, blacksmiths are probably the most overdone thing in LEGO Castle ever, but I had to include one here. For our flooring, we're going to go with another cobblestone-ish floor, but this time with some 1x2 ingots and tiles. I wanted the floor pattern to be fairly similar to the courtyard because they are going next to each other, so I wanted them to have their own kind of style together. But it still needed to stand out on its own. And I think that this pattern might actually look better than our last one. We're going to stick with the same color scheme for our walls, but we'll add a forge for the blacksmith to work in. To get this little overhang we've got on the forge, I've just placed some rounded bricks on a couple of snot bricks. The LEGO Ideas blacksmith does this, and I think it works really well and it's a nice look. Next to the forge, we'll place a broom for sweeping up all of the metal shards that no doubt coat the cobbled floor after a long day of work. Directly above the forge, we'll stick another Lionite shield on the wall by attaching a clip to the shield. This is a great method for hiding these oval shields that can be kind of tricky to get flush against the wall. Above it, I'll have the arch jut out a bit to give the shield even more depth. We're going to keep the left side of the wall pretty plain, but we'll be hanging a suit of armor here to give the habitat some more detail. Now what would a blacksmith's forge be without an anvil? I've actually just taken the one from the Ideas Blacksmith because to be honest with you, it's the best looking one at this scale that I I've ever seen. If you have a better one, please let me know in the comments because I kind of doubt it. Next to it we'll place a cauldron of water for quenching all the blades that he makes, and we'll also give him a barrel with a shovel for the forge and another hammer. With the blacksmith stood behind the anvil, I think we have a pretty sweet looking scene. This face print that the blacksmith has is just perfect for him, he looks so focused. Again, if you're curious about this fig, his torso is just the back print from the recent Barbarian CMF, with some added on silver arms. Before we move on, I just want to say that I think the reason I like making these so much is because they almost feel like a movie or a TV set. You've got all your set dressing on the inside, but half the room is exposed without any walls. In my opinion, it just gives you so much more room to make interesting and lively looking interiors, which has always been my favorite part about mock building. Seriously, after this video, you should give making one of these a try. They are a ton of fun to build. Alright, moving on, now I think it's time we make the barracks for all the Lionite soldiers to live in. I'm going to change up the flooring from the last two and go with a sandy kind of dirty floor with a carpet on one side. 
I'm placing the carpet right below where I'll build the bunk beds. But first we have to make the walls. Again, I'm going with the same basic castle stonework that I did for the last two. We'll hide another shield on the wall on the right side, and we'll place a clip here, which will make more sense in a second. I want our bunk beds to actually fit a real minifigure, so we'll make them five studs long. I'm using a dark blue color for the bedding to match the color scheme of these lion knights. To make these into bunk beds, we of course need to build a frame around them. I'm going with a simple brown and dark tan structure with a couple of decoration pieces inside of it. Now that our bunk bed is finished, we'll place a lantern in that clip for some much needed light. Now since this is a barracks, I think we might as well throw in a weapon rack with a spear and a sword. I just love this new sword mold from Lord of the Rings, and I wish it would come to pick a brick. So for our minifigure, we'll be using this guy that you may recognize as the Traveling Knight from my Bandit Kingdom video. If you haven't seen it already, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I am really pleased with how this room turned out, and it will make for a nice last room for the bottom floor of the castle. I'm not going to connect these three habitats we have just yet, we'll do that a little later once all six of them are done. So next up, since we're moving up a floor in the castle, I think it makes sense if we build a wizard's study next. Now on the second floor, I want to try some new floor patterns out, so for this one I'm going with a tan and dark red cross on the floor. Tan and dark red naturally go really well with each other, and I think they work nicely for this library slash study room. I did have like 6 dark red plates snap on me during this build, so that was a ton of fun. It sucks that such a great lego color is so prone to breaking. When I was planning which rooms to include in this castle, I knew I wanted to have a wizard study with a large bookshelf for all of his spellbooks. So to do that, we're going to place a bunch of these arches that all converge in the back corner of the room. I wanted this shelf to have a more unique shape rather than just going with the basic rectangular ones that we're all used to. One of the best techniques to make books is just by stuffing a shelf full of these 1x2 plates and tiles. It's a super simple way to do it, but it honestly looks the best. I've seen some other techniques to do this, and I just don't like them as much as this really simple method. I did try and use as many different colors as I could, and was very happy to find some of these rare 1x2 purple tiles to throw in there as well. To hold all of these books in place, we'll throw down some jumper plates and completely build up the walls around the room. Now I could put some more books on this second shelf, but I thought it would be nice to instead place some potions and trinkets here for some more variation. After all, it is a wizard study, so I wanted to include some more magical items in here. Speaking of, I wanted the wizard of this castle to be a bit different from your standard pointy-hatted old man. So I'm using this crazy looking face that I believe is from Monkey Kid, and I've also given him a purple turban to match it. I really like how this guy turned out, but I wish I had some purple robes to match his turban. There's probably a Harry Potter fig out there that would work for this, but I just don't have it, so whatever. So now that this one is done, I think we should build a kitchen for the other room on the second floor. To start, I'm going to throw down some black and white tiles and a checkerboard pattern. This is a pretty overdone aesthetic for LEGO kitchens, but I can't deny that I love the way it looks. For the walls of the kitchen, I'm actually going to change it up a bit. On both sides of the room, we'll have the same standard stonework, but in the middle, we'll use white, making sure that a couple of studs stick out for a shelf that we'll fill up here in a second. I'm also going to place a clip here for another detail that we'll add after the interior is done. Back to the floor, we'll add in this counter space that have cut up cheese, bread, and a carrot. I'm obviously taking a lot of inspiration from the Medieval Town Square set, and I'm also trying to make use of some of the extra pieces from that set. We oftentimes have so many extra pieces from our sets that never get used in anything, so I try and use them whenever I can in my mocks. That's obviously where a lot of these cut up cheese pieces are coming from. For the stove in our kitchen, I'll place this little oven under this slope on the left side, which we will then throw a pot of sauce on top of. For some last second additions, we'll also throw a bunch of glasses on the top shelf and some produce up here in a bag. And our last thing we have to do is add in the chef. I just love how this room turned out, and it makes me want to build a full custom medieval tavern equipped with a bar, kitchen, and dining area, maybe even with some rooms for rent on the second floor. I feel like that would be a really fun mock to do. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something like that in a future video. So for our final room, and the only one on the third floor, I think we should make an office for the queen of the castle. I want to include a desk with a bunch of unique items and treasure on it, along with an opulent looking chair. So to begin, we'll throw down a dark tan and regular tan carpet with some basic stonework walls as our base. Next we'll build the chair. Again, I want this chair to just look rich if you know what I mean. So we're going to be using purple and bright light orange tiles to give it that nice punch of color. These two colors work so well for royalty, and would actually be a cool color scheme to see in a custom faction. The back of the chair is just going to be built up with some basic black bricks, 
And now that the chair is done, we'll place it against this wall and now we can move on to the desk. We'll build up the desk with this arch and some extra brown studs for height. Now we can then add a couple of shelves to the back of it. Again, I want this desk to be able to hold a bunch of random trinkets and treasure, so it needs to have a lot of room for that. On the desk, we'll place an open book, a lantern, and this chopstick piece. On the first shelf, we'll add a statue and a pair of scissors, and on the top shelf, we'll add a ship in a bottle, a chunk of gold, a candle holder, and a silver chalice. Once we add in the queen, we are done. So now that all six habitats are finished, we can finally combine them all together into the full castle layout. I love how simple these are to make, and once you've got them all linked up together, they just look so cool. You could even swap the rooms around to change up the layout as you please. I think my favorite, both to build and how it actually looks in the end, is the blacksmith, but the barracks and the kitchen are close behind it. I seriously couldn't recommend you try making these out anymore. They are such a unique way to display your minifigures, and honestly don't take that many parts to make. If you're into interior builds at all like I am, just give these a go, they are so much fun. Let me know which room was your favorite in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? I'm trying to hit 20k by the end of May, and it'd mean a ton if you did. And as always, thank you so much for watching.